is you need some kind of disruptions you know to spur innovation maybe a lot of things will change after this so keep home be home be safe keep washing your hands and uh, you know uh, keep hoping for the best okay thank you so let us start uh, uh, you know today's discussion uh, is my screen visible yes sir, it is visible it is visible wonderful yes, <coughs> okay good so this is one very crucial talk. yes raj it is visible now thank you and uh, i want you know everyone all of the students out over here to uh, uh, really focus on you know uh, this particular discussion that we're going to have for the next 55 odd minutes or rather 45 odd minutes and then maybe 10 minutes of uh, uh, q and a that we have uh, is what is it that you know what is what is like i always ask you know and what is this uh what is this core function of any you know uh enterprise i mean that 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 is a question i think you should ask philosophical to a certain extent but also practical to a, a lot of extent what is it why why do we need an organization what is the purpose of you know the enterprise that we have formed what does it do of course we sell different products we, we have a lot of customers we are happy doing it you know we believe that we are contributing to the economy of the world it makes us feel uh, entrepreneurial okay it brings out the leadership qualities in us uh, that's that's all fine i mean these are all peripheral but what is at the core of uh, you know um, core of the enterprise and that's what i want you to focus on I think the core function of entrepreneurship is always been to deliver outstanding value okay to the identified target segment efficiently okay so as to maximize the profits so there are four or five keywords in this statement okay first is delivering outstanding value okay in today's world nobody is going to buy anything which is not of value which doesn't really make any sense or it's just a utility product you know people are actually looking at value what is it i mean you must you're buying a simple thing like a soap you want to understand what is the value the soap is creating in today's times if the soap you know uh, uh, proposes to clean your hands of bacteria and make it you know hygienic then that is the value that the soap is uh, delivering a soap cannot get away by saying that i am you know generating froth okay and that is good enough so you have to deliver outstanding value the identified target segment is another keyword you know you can't be seen as selling uh, everything to everyone okay i mean it is this is a wrong notion right today no nobody can get up and say ki i am i am going to be you know my product is such a great thing that everybody is going to buy it and it is i think we as students sometimes uh, Uh, get wrapped in this false reality saying that you know maybe we are you know making a product that everyone is going to buy no the market is out there but within the market i think what you should focus on on identifying what is your target segment who is what is that niche you know in in on the learn wise uh, program foundational course we learn about four types of markets uh, and i'm sure some of the students have been through that lesson that there are actually four types of markets uh, for entrepreneurs and the market that an entrepreneur startup entrepreneur uh, should focus on is something called as a niche market okay so you have to identify that niche very um, clearly okay and then you have to deliver the value to the niche very efficiently what does efficiency means i mean we have all studied efficiency right efficiency clearly means that the output is has to be higher than the input right like if you spend 100 rupees and get something uh, worth only 80 rupees out of it it's not efficiency you should know efficiency is basically in any anybody any student of engineering will tell you that the output has to be much more than what you are actually putting in as input and of course what is the final goal the final goal is to maximize the profits i mean obviously you don't want to run an enterprise that is not making profits okay so the profits could be in terms of money could be in terms of recognition could be anything but i honestly personally like the concept that the uh, that the enterprise maximizes profits for all the work that it is doing okay so 
Okay. So the first question that uh, you know we should always ask when you are looking at uh, uh, generating uh, the value proposition. Okay. You may be selling anything. See today, I know I can't say that uh, uh, selling, uh, uh, selling. Uh, let us assume. I mean, even having a. a, a a uh, hair cutting saloon is a bad business but when you look at javed habib he has got 4500 odd outlets so in a simple business like a hair cutting saloon today can become a large enterprise okay uh, somebody like a shaina hussain who used to make herbal cosmetics from her home today is one of the largest brands in india when it comes to uh, personal care products okay so no business is small or no business is insignificant what is more important is the process of you know scaling up that business and that is whatever discussion uh, for the days so we'll start by first you know asking as to who's my customer really okay this is very like i just reiterated that statement that just sometimes to say that you know everybody is my customer is actually living in alternate reality because if you really look at it within a family of your own family your parents must be using a different set of products and you are using a different set of products right i mean when it comes to even toothpaste today you know i know this from my own personal experience that my kids want a different kind of a toothpaste whereas i'm more into the herbal you know a toothpaste coming from a different generation altogether so even a small product like a toothpaste you know targets the customer very well so you have to be very clear when you're saying that who's my customer how can i define him or her you know what is the what's the what's the definition of my customer what is the age profile what is the academic profile does he know english does he talk in the regional language what is his age group 18 to 25 or you know uh, 35 to 50 you may be targeting a particular product or a particular customer but i want you to understand there is something called as a demographic profile what is a demographic profile it is the definition of the customer identifying him by gender by age by education by you know uh, all these characteristics which clearly defines for example if i were to tell you that if you are in a state of uh, say maharashtra where we are located uh, you know and uh, you are only targeting the uh, youth in an urban profile so you will say that the youth in urban profile typically means somebody in the age of 18 to 30 okay staying in a city uh, metropolitan city like bombay pune nasik okay um, is educated can talk at least two languages the local language as well as english that is a demographic profile then comes the question of geographic profile okay what is geographic profile all the customer segments are located initially in a particular geographic area for example if you are in a city like delhi then you know your delhi is a very large urban uh, you know uh, marketplace so you can't say the customer is residing in delhi within delhi there are certain areas where you may find that your customer is you know ideally located see i you have to get a focus very clear as a startup you are a small entity you can't go out and you know create a campaign which will reach out to millions millions of people okay uh, what you will have to do is you will have to actually focus your energies into targeting a particular geographic profile and that is really really uh, you know uh, important basically because as a startup Uh, we don't want to dissipate our energies in 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 trying to reach out to everyone where we can't service that particular market okay so a geographic profile of a customer is also very important then of course you have to figure out as to what motivates him in today's world just knowing the demographic profile or the geographic profile doesn't really help us narrow it down we need to understand psychographic uh, or behavioral concepts right i mean you must have seen that in your uh own uh, you know institute while you are all of the same age group and the same uh, you know a demographic profile there are people who strongly are say animal lovers or people who eat only vegan food or people who are uh, you know caring about nature okay are very sensitive to uh, things like that so this is their behavioral pattern so now that you know your customer you are not only knowing the customer by in terms of his overall profile but you know exactly who the customer looks like 
if i were to give you an example and say that you know and just an example and say that you know uh, you want to ta you know uh, target uh, you know uh, you want to target sports uh, t-shirts okay or sports wear for selling it to students in your uh, uh, in your institute okay and simple like sports you know now tokyo olympics is coming so you want to create a lot of uh, you know uh, sports wear using the olympics as a theme and you believe that a lot of students would want to you know wear with an india logo or you know with your little country logo and uh, you know you want to sell them up right so where would you find this particular students i mean your institute has probably or your university has probably thousands of students right so you're not going to go out and uh, try and sell it to every student on the campus which may be into maybe a few thousands okay you're going to identify what is called as watering holes so where do you find these uh, you know students who are interested in sports obviously you will find them on the sports ground or you will find them in gymnasiums or you will find them on facebook groups which discuss sports you want to find uh, you may, you may find them on uh, people who are attending sports events on the weekends so these are called as watering holes okay watering holes are the places where our target customer is aggregating okay maybe once a week maybe once in 15 days maybe they are on the uh, on the web you know trying to do that so you need to figure out not only the profile but what is the watering hole where is it that my customers are actually coming together why is that very important because you need to identify the best channels best channels to reach out to them so when you look at students in your in around you you'll fear that there are students who are more interested in academics there are students who are more interested in social activities there are students who are more interested in creative activities there are students who are more interested in sports and you will realize that all these four or five different types of you know uh, students use different channels to communicate with each other so you will have to figure out what is the best channel uh, you know that i have uh, decided to reach out to my target customer very important you know we talk about design thinking in our course and when we say that you know uh, we have to use the design thinking principles uh, in our uh, in in whatever we do i want you to start immersing and empathizing uh, with these uh, with this target segment that you have that means you need to feel yourself exactly like what they are feeling as long as you are able to uh, you know get this connection right identify the person the demographic geographic psychographic profile understanding where they are coming together the channel to reach out to them and immerse and empathize with them you will have what is called as a customer persona mark my word okay what is it called customer persona that means it's a definition of the target customer you know that i have uh, very ready in my mind okay so now i'm going to stop here for a moment okay and i want you to ask me some questions maybe ishita uh, you know or vijaya you can just moderate i see something on the chat are there any questions which are uh, yes a few to do with the customer segment sir yeah. uh, so first of all uh, there's one question from dinesh saying that how much does uh, geographic profile help in uh, uh, or make a difference in create, in analyzing our customer segment for example you know setting up a ice cream shop in a cold place like antarctica so yeah. how much does that drive uh, understanding of a customer profile the value proposition and the solution okay very good question and very good example ice cream shop right so can you sell ice cream i mean would you like to sell ice cream to a customer who is located say 5 kilometers away from your ice cream shop you can i mean if a push comes to shove and you know you want to be a brave guy but you want to sell because what may happen is by the time somebody orders an ice cream for a very far region you will also realize he will also realize that the ice cream might not be in the right shape to eat okay so if you are in an ice cream parlor which is a very good example to drive you need to be aware of the geographic you know around maybe 1 km not oh yeah 1 km radius so you know draw a circle about 1 km radius from your shop and then within that circle try and identify okay who's the exact who's the exact customer 
that you want to sell. So that is why geographic is, is, is very important. Any other question, Ishita? Okay, sir. <clears throat> Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in, is, uh, sorry, Vijaya. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I see some Q&A and most of the questions are related to water hole example. Uh, they want to understand the whole concept of what is watering holes. So probably okay. that we can quickly uh, take okay. up. Yeah. Watering. How many of you have seen the movie uh, Lion King? I guess everyone has, right? Okay, so in the Lion King, very simple. Uh, when it rains and all the jungle animals they need to drink water, they come to a watering hole. So watering hole in a typical sales or a marketing scenario is the place where you have the highest chance, okay, highest chance of your target customer aggregating for anything, you know. For example, if you are going to sell, let us assume that uh, you're going to sell uh, something to do with art material art material okay let's assume that you have you have a product which helps artists paint better or you know frame their paintings better where do you think you will go to you know reach out uh, uh, to your customer anybody wants to kind of type in this answer let us assume that you have an art material art very simple where do you think you will go Okay, art gallery, right. Mr. Harishwa, thank you. You'll go to an art gallery, which is very important. You will connect with people who are running art courses. Okay, and, and they'll, they'll have students who are doing this art program. We'll also go to places, let us assume like exhibitions where uh, such art material is being sold. So now we are getting it. If I were to target any kind of a customer today, you'll have to think, what is my customer who is interested in doing this? Where would he be on this weekend? Okay. Most of the people you will see that actually tend to aggregate. Okay. Today we live in a very interconnected world. Okay. Let me tell you uh, of a very uh, interesting you know, uh, connection that we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, very interesting connection that we have. Uh, I have a group of friends who play the mouth organs. Okay. Mouth, have you seen mouth organ? Yeah. It's not a very, uh, uh, what I should say, a difficult instrument to, uh, master but of course very nice instrument if you can master it and you can have is uh, a mouth organ okay there are communities on the facebook you can go out and check of people who are interested in mouth organs and aggregate it over the weekends or once in a month at a specific location and they all learn from each other so there are online courses that help you teach mouth organs then there are people who will you know aggregate because you are interested in a, playing a mouth organ i'm interested in playing a mouth organ let's all meet up together on a weekend and let's all learn from each other okay so these are called as tribes okay if you have not heard the term before there are these are called as tribes okay so my encouragement to everybody on this uh, uh, on this group over here is there is a gentleman called professor set godin okay and he has written a wonderful book called tribes so if you are interested in finding out more about how to reach out to, uh, you know, uh, people and where to reach out to them, there is a lovely book called Tribes. I highly recommended it to all my students. Uh, and that basically gives you a concept of how to reach it out. Anything else, Ishita, or should we move? Couple of more questions, sir. So one interesting question came up that how do you determine uh, you know, psychographic profile or a behavioral profile, considering that the dynamics of the market are continuously changing. Okay, you mean to say vegans become, you know, non-vegans over end or over the weekend or something like that? Could be, yes. One uh, I don't think so. <laughs> then they are not vegans in the first place, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Psychographics, unfortunately, you can change your demographic profile. For example, you were staying in Delhi, you know, and you could... Uh, you have now shifted to Chennai. So you're, you know, jo sorry, your geographic profile, but psychographic is slightly not that difficult. If you really try and understand what the motivation of the person is, what happens is, uh, we should learn to immerse and empathize with it. Like somebody, I just saw a question, which was looked very interesting. 
on that we have uh, sorry i'm just scrolling down okay sir i can read them out to you there was yeah a... we have start mudit bansal is asking a question we have started yes. our venture related to the lgbtq community where we are planning to set up a counseling wonderful mudit very good uh, initiative i think there's a very well uh, defined segment that is there the lgbtq community today is very uh, vocal very visible and uh, you know uh, and there are ways and uh, means to reach out to this community and then of course i mean if you have set up this whole business on counseling then i'm sure you will reach out you will be able to reach out to exactly the target segment that uh, you have uh, identified okay so thank you so do we have time for one more question on segment oh yeah we have time i have lots of lots of time only thing is my problem is that 1 o'clock becomes then a you know uh, time that you may want to shut me down so i'm okay <laughs> So, sir, just one last question before we move on to the next part of the training. True. So, we have this from Himanshu says that uh, segmentation becomes quite confusing in case of the user he uh, he or she might have uh, different needs or demands. So, you know, again related to the dynamic and the changing needs of each individual. So, how does one club them under one segment? How is how does one address that challenge? i think if you are facing a issue with you know segmentation and targeting my suggestion is you should uh, you know interact with uh, your faculty or faculty mentor and basically help them get your definition of your customer you know very clearly because my next topic that i i mean the next slide that i'm going to show i'm going to show is a very very interesting slide and i think that will to a certain extent help you understand why i call as building the customer persona as probably one of the most important you know step towards defining the value proposition okay so now look at the next slide this is amazing what is this slide what does this slide tell you this slide is nothing is nothing there is no person called as jill anderson okay there is no person called jill anderson i have named her jill anderson okay what am i trying to do i am trying to reach out to reach out okay reach out to a person who represents who jill anderson represents so i need to understand what is her personality type i need to understand what are her goals i need to understand what is her age what are the kind of brands she uses what is the kind of technology you know that she uses to reach out to her this is not a real person but in my mind when i'm targeting a particular customer profile i want to create a something called as a customer persona okay and this is very crucial because what i even recommend going one step ahead okay and saying that you have to name your customer persona you can call him anything you can you can you can call him raj if you want okay and say okay who's raj raj is a is a, is a senior citizen above the age of 50 overweight okay and uh, uh, has a lot of sedentary uh, lifestyle okay uh, doesn't do much too much of an exercise okay uh, has health related problems from you know blood pressure to diabetes okay loves to have uh, you know eat uh, junk food uh, is not very sedentary is very sedentary sorry okay and has a health risk factor and let us assume that you are trying to reach out to me as uh, as a target customer and i i assume that it, in your mind you are able to see me as uh, uh, your target customer for let us assume that you are you you are you are you are thinking of you know setting up a, a, a health resort or a health and wellness resort for people who are like me okay sedentary lifestyle on the weekend has yoga some physical activities ayurveda you know healthy food Uh, you know it's a very high end probably located at the base of the hills uh, somewhere in a nice scenic location so now you know me as a customer you should be able to you know make a profile of mine like the one that you see then you have identified customer persona it doesn't mean that i am the only customer it means that you have now identified yes we need to target people like raj okay when we are focusing on whatever we are going to deliver
that brings us to a very interesting discussion that we want to have today okay and this is where we'll i will need a lot of your attention uh you know sorry i will need a lot of your attention uh, uh in today's discussion because this is the core of the discussion and if you miss out on this discussion i think the whole discussion uh, just become merely becomes a talk so let me focus on saying that what are people buying today okay and i start by making a very bold statement and that bold statement is people have stopped buying products and services people have stopped buying products and services people don't buy any products and services what you see around is a big myth big fallacy people are only hiring products okay hiring products and services for something called as jobs to be done okay people don't have you know a lot of time to you know, think about a product and service they are looking at what is the job that i need to be done and they are hiring a particular product and a service only for that particular moment uh, to get the job done and once the job is done forget about the product now this is not a concept and i am not talking something fancy this is something as a concept was introduced by uh, a gentleman called professor anthony ulwick somewhere in the late 90s okay and he has written a book called jobs to be done so you can just go and google anthony ulwick jobs to be done this concept was further you know uh, taken ahead by uh, the famous harvard professor clay christensen uh, in his book uh, the innovators dilemma okay and anthony ulwick says that the theory is jobs to be done and the outcome driven innovation is is the practical version of it we don't want to get into you know a very theoretical discussion on uh, uh, what this really means so i'm going to use some example okay some example uh, that will you know uh, drive this point in your mind so today when you look at higher education okay let us assume a typical mba education for that matter okay what is the mba education is it more about have you joined an mba education because you want to understand more in details about the you know theory of marketing and theory of consumer behavior or have you joined an mba program because it's good for your career okay it helps you get a better job it gives you one step up in life think about it very clearly why do people go for higher education is it for knowledge or is it because it is good to have it as on your career so you go for any higher education and you will realize that today in in the institute that we go the institutes that we focused on are focused on getting you a better job getting you a better you know placement part of it that is why the libraries are becoming smaller and the career you know counseling centers are becoming bigger so you have lesser and lesser books lesser and lesser students sitting in the library to actually read it and find the knowledge but you will find that a lot of students are doing a lot of courses okay so you are doing a data analytics course you are doing machine learning and something additional because you are looking at advancing your career so higher education as a product if it is getting sold what is being sold is a career product and what you think should have been sold was a knowledge product. let us look at a fancy mobile or a car right i mean fancy car let's assume your dad buys a fancy car and you want to buy a mobile i mean is it about utility is it because you are buying a fancy mobile because it has more features and you know it will help you do better or is it very aspirational why aspirational basically because you want to show to people that look you know i am doing very well in life you know last time i had an apple iphone 8 or whatever it is now i have an apple iphone 11 Okay, so I'm progressing in life. Last time I had a smaller car. Now I'm three years time. I bought a bigger car. Did you buy a bigger car because the old car was not working and you know you had to junk it? Did you buy a new car for that? No, you bought a new car basically because you want to know show that your you know show it to the world probably show it to the world saying that look you know I am doing so good in life, wonderful. Okay, same thing is with foreign holidays. what do we do on foreign holidays do we really go and switch off our mobile and you know relax and have leisure maybe a few of you would want to do that but most of you want to stand beneath an eiffel tower or stand outside a taj mahal 
click a selfie and put it on social media because you want people to know that you have gone on foreign holidays rather than you have gone on a leisure part of it, right? Same thing is when you're ordering food online, what is it that you're doing? Are you ordering some cuisine stuff or you're ordering convenience, okay? When you're watching Major League Football or if you're in India, if you're watching IPL, is IPL about sports or is it about entertainment? When you're going out for fancy dining, is it about the food that you want to experience or you want to experience the ambience, stuff like that. Even this has moved on to financial products. Today, people buy insurance, not for the security that an insurance product is supposed to give, but as a means of savings. So are you getting the point that I'm trying to make over here? The point that I'm trying to make over here is what we buy today is not really the product. We are buying the value out of it. Okay. And it is getting us help some job done. So a higher education institute is hired by the customer for a two year period of time just to get a job done. And what is the job done? job done is get my kid a better job the literal job part of it get my kid a better career okay so i want to go on a foreign holiday i am hiring let us assume i am hiring paris for a period of seven days i'm hiring paris i'm not taking you know a holiday i'm just hiring paris and the eiffel tower okay so that i can hire it for a social recognition this is slightly a different concept, right? Think over it deeply. First time you may be in self-denial and you know, want to fight and say, no, no, this is not true. I am actually making a cake. People are buying that cake. So no, I am actually selling a product and a service. Ask yourself this question. Okay. That when I go to Domino's, when I order food from Domino's pizza and I, when I go to pizza hut, okay, to eat pizza, am I eating really pizza? Or am I ordering convenience from a Domino's Pizza and a using experience when I go to Pizza Hut? Though the physical product is still a pizza, is still a pizza, 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 but under two different circumstances, I am getting a different job that needs to be done. Okay. And this is the core when it comes to understanding this concept of value proposition okay la that brings us to the core topic that we want to discuss for today okay and uh, what is it let's let's look at a very simple you know uh, uh, example okay because nothing works like an example when it comes to understanding a concept okay why we want to understand is jobs to be done concept you know because in lesson 3 on your uh, uh, foundational course you have to do fill up something called as a value proposition canvas and in that value proposition canvas the first thing that you are trained to think about is uh, what is it you know what are the jobs to be done what is the customer expecting a job to be done to you and how do i really you know uh, reach out to my customer and help them complete these jobs so in today's world as they say in entrepreneurship there are no problems there are no problems there are only jobs that need to be done okay so let's look at a very very simple example in today's world and this is you know something that i conjured up uh, because i thought i was talking to you and we are living in very dangerous times you know everybody is supposed to wear masks okay and so i've taken the liberty of uh, uh, you know using this as an example so before i go down to this example of you know creating uh, a value proposition canvas are there any questions ishita that you may want uh, me to stop and answer so uh, there's an interesting question that came up uh, raj which i is, love interesting uh, questions yeah <laughs> Tell how me. insurance uh, turn into purchasing savings over security Mm -hmm. like, uh, um, insurance on phones and travel are they primarily for safety or is it for security if you could explain that point sir no in terms product of product insurances security. are different product insurance is different when you buy life insurance okay life insurance today product you know is used as a tax saving instrument rather than using it for security 
Right. When you buy a phone insurance, how can I mean? Come on, this who asked this question should you know kind of kind of think it through. What kind of savings would you get if you buy a phone insurance? You are actually paying more for a phone insurance. That is for a security. But when you are buying a life insurance product, when you pay the premium on your life insurance, there is a tax deduction that the government offers you. So it is more of a tax saving instrument rather than a security instrument. Any other question? Yes, sir. Before we move, perhaps you would like to take this question later, but just wanted to point it out to you. There's some questions on building B2B customer persona. So if at any point of time, you would like to throw some tips and best practices. Yeah, B2B or B2C, P2P, B2B, B2P, you know, these are all terms that doesn't matter. If you have identified your customer segment very well, let us assume that you are selling a hammer. Okay, and you have decided that my hammer will be used by a particular, you know, B two B customer. Let us assume my hammer will be used. Let us assume it's a big sledge hammer, and will be used by, uh, you know, the construction industry. Okay, so and that is your B two B customer segment. Define who the when you say it is a construction industry, construction company. what size of the construction company where is that company located what is the buying behavior of that customer do they put out tenders you know or do they go or you need to you know grease somebody's palms to uh, get a contract with that company identify all the characteristics that you have about your target customer and you may want to give the company a name also doesn't matter but as long as you have a profile of a customer you will realize that the sledge hammer which is a product that you are selling okay will also be targeted directly to the b2b segment so doesn't matter whether it is p2p b2b b2c b2b to b you know there are classification doesn't matter identify the customer very well name the customer very well yes ishita Yes, sir. I think we can progress. We can progress. Okay. And now this is very interesting. Now I want you to all focus. Forget about whatever is things. Just focus for a moment. Just put on you know the cap of an entrepreneur. We are all students over here. Okay. We are all. We have a lot of ideas that come up. Even I have taken the simplest of idea. Very very simple of idea. And let us assume that I find that students on the campus. You know, and I'm especially. I'm not talking of in this current period. Okay. Now this current period is a lockdown period. So I assume that. no colleges and all are closed but let us assume that we were not under lockdown and we were still supposed to uh, you know uh, go to campuses but the only thing that was important was that you know wear masks uh, and then go out okay but as a student you definitely i mean as a youngster you definitely are very turned off by that you know blue and dull green color masks that everybody is wearing around and then you think that you know wow let us look at some very fancy mask a okay, fancy mask okay which every youth will buy let's say young people why youth i mean even at my age if you give me a good mask maybe i would love to wear them you know something like a joker's a smile or something whatever you want to think about fancy mask something that is good okay so just assume that you know there there is there is a demand for students who are wanting to you know buy that mask okay so this is the value proposition canvas that you are supposed to fill up what is a value proposition canvas it's a simple canvas which has two parts it has a part called as the customer segment and then it has a part called as the value proposition so on the right hand side what you see as the customer segment is uh, is where you need to fill up all those things that you need to know about your customer okay and how do you know about this customer because you remember in the foundational program you have gone out of the building and met and you know conducted customer interviews okay so when you have talked to the customer you have tried to identify what is it that you know they are really uh, struggling with you have identified something called as the jobs to be done okay and based on the information on the right hand side okay you create you are the creator of the value proposition which is your product and the service and how you meet them so as long as it meets what your customer wants and what your uh, what is the proposed solution you have something called as a customer product fit okay customer product fit okay so this is still a product which is not product 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 but is a something that you think in your mind a customer might end up buying 
but even before you see this you need to understand the what is it that my customer is really wanting 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 okay and so let us focus on the right hand side which is the customer segment okay what are the jobs to be done here okay what is it when somebody says that you know okay i uh, you know I, I i want a mask or i want a mask but i don't want a regular mask because the regular mask my parents can always give me you know it's available in any shop or green dull you know blue color i don't want that i really want a mask okay but what is the first thing that the mask should do i mean it can be fancy but i think the first thing that the mask should do is prevent the virus from you know entering my mouth or whatever it is so it should give me the medical safety of the mask that i'm wanting to so that is uncompromisable okay i should be able to choose from various designs so you don't tell me there are only three types of masks that are available and uh, you know uh, uh, you know i have got i don't have a lot of choice because we live in a world where you know everybody is spoiled for choice right i mean as students we know when we go out and buy just a pair of jeans Though a jeans is a jeans is a jeans, we want to be sure that we have at least tried twenty five different types of jeans uh, before we decide to buy the first one that we had actually thought that we we are supposed to buy. So we are spoiled for choice in today's world, and I accept it. You know the fact that nobody just wants to be constrained by the fact that you know we have only limited choices. So let's assume that there has to be wide variety of choices. then probably if you don't mind unisex designs you know something that both the male gender the female gender can be worn but see listen i want to pay online huh? so you need to have some facility like a google pay or something like that i don't know i mean don't expect me to carry cash and stuff like that and i more importantly you know i think if i can get it delivered you know it, it is amazing you know like i would love it so these are called as functional jobs okay functional jobs functional jobs are uncompromisable you need to get this done the mask should prevent you know uh, the virus attacks i should have fancy designs i should also have unisex designs to choose from i should get you know be able to pay online get it delivered then comes this concept of you know the mask i don't mind actually you know the mask should also be look good if i'm going to post my profile on instagram wearing it okay so you know this is something that is important to me because i want everybody else to also know that i am wearing this fancy mask and the mask should be so good that i should be able to gift it to my friends you know and they should feel wow this is such a great gift that i uh, uh, have given so these are called as social jobs that i want to be done so but also i feel very strongly about the environment so you know maybe if the masks are you know made up of good environmentally friendly material i would be very happy uh, because then i will feel good about buying the masks and you know of course if my buying this mask helps some other people then also you know i'm going to very feel very happy about it okay so now when you look at the jobs to be done okay am i talking about price am i talking about you know being it cheap or you know stuff like that because if i wanted to buy cheap mask i can always buy the boring blue green color mask wear it here i am looking for something an unmet job that you are going to get it done for me and you are the entrepreneur i am the customer so what am i wanting great mask great designs ability to pay online should be instagramable okay better if it is made out of you know some environmental stuff and this is my requirement this is what i am telling you as a customer that this is what i actually want as a job that needs to be done okay now but when i am getting this job done now there are some things that i would want to avoid okay first of all i don't want a situation where you know the mask is of poor quality and you know the color is run out so if i it, because of the sweat or something you know the colors start coming off the mask is made up of pure quality no i'm not going to buy this it stops okay second if you tell me that you know you have only limited masks and every time i check up with you the masks go out of stock you know i because i'm not going to buy one mask i'm going to buy maybe eight masks because on different days based on my different mood sometimes i'm feeling very evil so i may buy buy a uh, Uh, i mean i may wear a joker mask and on some of the days that i am feeling very good about it i may wear a you know a spider man mask or whatever so the days on my moods i want different masks i am going to buy them at least eight or 10 of them very nice okay but don't tell me that you know poor run out of stock i don't need I, 
I would also love, you know, if these masks were some medically certified or, you know, uh, maybe if I could, you know, wash and reuse them or you may not expect me to just use mask and throw it. So if it is washable, reusable, this is something that, you know, it's there in my heart. So these are called as the pains and the gains. So let us look at that. Have we identified on the right hand side, the customer jobs, the gains and the pains. Once you have done this, once you have all these details down on this you know value proposition canvas you can move now to the left hand part of the product see now you have a product okay so now you have designed some products the designer mask okay you say okay my mask they are going to look like this they are made of an extremely good quality uh, you know uh, material they are coming in very fancy designs whatever you want unlimited designs at this particular point of time okay but what are the pain relievers that I've added? You didn't want it to go out of stock. So no, I have tied up with suppliers and I can assure you that you will always get masks that you want it part of it. I'm guaranteeing you these are made of the highest quality material and colors for them. You wanted, you know, medical certification. I have got certification from WHO, which says that my mask is, you know, medically certified, not only by some local medical association, by the World Health Organization. And I can give you a mask that you can wash and reuse 20 times okay masks and reusable not infinite number of times there's a limited life to which you can you know wash and reuse a mask also so how does it feel now it feels now that what my customer wanted and the product and the service that i am planning to think is there a match possibly yes and what are we saying that wow we have clearly identified the value proposition that the customer wanted with what I'm going to be delivering as a product and a service. Okay, so this is what now comes out of, this is what is what I call as the customer value statement that I'm going to make. Okay, what is the customer value statement? I'm going to define the customer value statement that for students on campus, who's my target customer? What did I say? I identified my target. For students on customer, students on campus, what is it that they want? They need protection during COVID-19 times. Okay. The fancy joker. I've just given it a name called as a fancy joker. What is the product category? The fancy joker is a facial mask. What is the unique value proposition? Is that it is WHO certified, available in a fancy range of designs. And what differentiates me from others is what is called as the uh, in 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 uh, is uh, value proposition is that it can be washed and reused twenty times. Okay. So now in one statement, one statement, you have clearly identified who the target customer is, what is the target customer seeking, what is your product and what is the core value proposition that you are delivering. Okay. So this is what I just wanted to take some time today to drive this point because this concept of value could, you know, differ for anyone and, you know, different customers. But what we need to figure out is what is that core value proposition that is addressable to my target customer. And I think this discussion basically helps you shed some light on whatever you're going to be thinking next. Okay, so what are the key learnings, uh, uh, you know, from, from the discussions that we had? Okay, what's the key learning? First, we have learned that customers pay only for value. They don't pay for, you know, anything else, anything nonsense. If there is no value, ask yourself, what is the last time you have bought something which was of not value? Bought something because there was some value, somewhere very hidden value, somewhere very obvious values. So value, what does value mean in today's world? Okay, what does value mean? Value means utility plus user experience. Look at it. User experience is a very important thing. Now this bottle of water, okay. Now this bottle of water has the utility of storing the water, but it has also a great user experience that I can hold it. Okay. I can see transparent in the water. I feel good about having water from this water bottle or take any product for that matter. 
take a phone a phone is also not only just a communication device but the whole user experience that comes with the phone okay so today's word please understand the concept of value is not just because a product and you just say no well, i give now just imagine like this right okay uh, you you set up a pizza uh, you know business and pizza is my favorite example when it comes to delivering you know talking about the concept of value uh, because and let's assume that you make pizza and you are so you know wrapped up in your mind saying that my pizza is the best pizza you know doesn't matter i mean i can beat the you know beat hollow any some of the best brands in the world i can my mother makes the best pizza and you will never taste anything there let now let us assume that you start delivering these pizzas in a very poorly wrapped you know uh, wrapped uh, enclosure do you think what will people think about it will they really like it because in their mind for a customer today anywhere okay pizza is good i mean pizza is good but they also like the experience of pizza coming in a pizza box you know those cut box you open it up the pizza is warm inside and there and there are packets of you know uh, oregano uh, and chili flakes packets put inside and a, a, a small tissue paper piece this is common right today's users are not expected to look at pizza you know wrapped up in a newspaper or wrapped up in something which is very very shoddy right so they are going to reject it you may make the best pizza the you know pizza would be very good but you since you have not stuck to the user experience about the pizza nobody is going to buy your pizza okay so that is very important today as well to understand that there is every product that we make it has to have a certain amount of user experience okay now let us look at the third point which is the customer persona and we talked enough about customer persona about why is it very important why is it very important that we name the customer persona and uh, you know be very clear in our mind as to who the customer really looks like or feels like this okay and of course clearly define jobs customers want done jobs are functional social and emotional in nature functional jobs are the utility functions social jobs are the jobs that you want others to feel good that you are doing it and emotional jobs are the jobs that make you personally feel good about doing it okay describe the pains and the gains very clearly okay pains and gains are not flipped they are not opposite of each other you know you can't say you know pain i want it uh, i don't want it expensive and gain you can say you know i want it cheap it doesn't work that way okay map the pain relievers to the pains map the gain elevators to the gains and remember not all pains and gains can be addressed so there will always be some you know pains and gains that you will not be able to address but look at what is the best that you can do uh, you know from from what you have understood as the customers uh, real requirement is and all products will undergo a certain amount of change so what you see as pizza today that's delivered by domino's pizza was not the same pizza about 60 years back okay but uh, you know the product has undergone certain amount of uh, changes uh, in which case it is very very important that you know you have to understand your products will also change that is what design thinking principle is all about over here right so i rest my case uh, for the day i think uh, i have just able managed to keep it up in time maybe another 5 minutes of uh, uh, q and a and then we can close this session so ishita are you there Yes, sir. Uh, just a couple of questions. I think uh, we will be, you know, uh, ready to close the session today. Sure. So, uh, Mudit has a question that uh, regarding his venture idea, which caters to the LGBTQ community. So, could you give some examples on the uh, the customer JTBD in in that case? Oh, it is his business. He should tell me <laughs> what JTBD is. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes, sir. actually yeah. would it the right answer would be for you to take a shot at uh, crafting the value proposition for your uh, i can help you fine tune it please do not outsource the job to me <laughs> yes sir uh, that's right and i know i am free and quarantined you know but <laughs> i don't want <laughs> so mudit i suggest that you make the value proposition canvas share it with us we will help you fine tune it i think that's a that's a better way of going it yes uh, ishita um no i think we are good to uh, good for today sir and uh, 
wanted to thank you immensely for taking time out on was it good did you think my example or what kind yes. of growth or yes yes so is it something i am like... almost tempted to become an entrepreneur <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much okay but this is i want everyone to uh, really under- appreciate the fact that this is this this particular activity of you know making the value proposition canvas for your own enterprise please involve your faculties please involve mentors you know from the foundation we are all here to help you find unit why i say this is very important because if you get the value proposition canvas right then your lean canvas becomes you know perfect and if your lean canvas becomes perfect then your chances of you know success goes up multiple times okay but if you get the value proposition canvas wrong then your lean canvas will go for you know downhill and then you know then 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 the whole thing is a mess and you'll have to re rework it back okay so there are additional materials uh, talks about uh, value propositions uh, canvas on the web go look it out for yourself be in touch with your faculties be in touch with your mentors with people at the foundation and uh, you know go ahead and create those value proposition canvases thank, thank you ishita you much, thank you vijaya thank you ankit thank you everyone for taking time out on a weekend and joining thank you raj yeah such a pleasure always thank you so much thank you thank you thank you very much ishita and raj sir and everyone here ankit shiva for making this a great success and we had such a lovely audience over 350 so i really appreciate the effort that everyone has put in today and making it a great success so we'll be keeping everyone posted for the upcoming such classes and thanks again ishita you've been very very helpful in making this a great success my pleasure thank, thank you, you so much thank bye you so all. much have you all bye. be safe bye. take care yes you too sir bye 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 everyone